Merry Christmas, everyone. I hope you had an amazing Christmas celebrating with your family and opening presents. It really is the most wonderful time of the year. We are wrapping up our Advent series this week on our lesson series, Not Sold in Stores, where we are learning about all the gifts of Christmas that can't be bought. Our memory verse has been Luke 2, 10 through 11. Do you think you have it memorized yet? Why don't you try and read it along with me today? But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. You know that feeling when you just really wanna give something to someone because you know how happy it'll make them or how much they'll love it? Well, I had some money that I was just itching to give away so someone could have a shopping spree. Why don't you check out this video to see what happened? Okay, so I have an imaginary $1,000 that I want to give away to someone. Does anybody want $1,000? <laughs> okay, Cameron, you're the lucky winner. Come on up. You're the lucky winner of $1,000. With this $1,000, you could buy like a couple Nintendo Switches, probably like three of them. You could buy like 500 ice cream cones. You could buy, hmm. What would you like to buy with $1,000? Mm. You have any idea? You could buy some movies, Everything. a ton of toys. Everything? I want to go to 10 movies at the movie. Oh, you could go to even more than that with $1,000. Okay, so you have $1,000, but you can keep it all for yourself and spend it on whatever you want. Or you can share some of it and give someone, somebody else a little bit of it so that they can buy something too. What do you think you'd want to do? Mm. Do you think you could share some with Kirsten or Kara so that they, like, if you shared $100 with Kirsten, she could buy, like, two tickets to go see Toby Mac in concert. Or she could go to the movie theaters several times. Or she could go shopping and buy some new clothes and shoes. That means I will So you would still have $900, but then you would be showing how generous you are by giving, and you could give $100 to Kirsten. And still have $900 to buy a ton of toys. Does that and sound like something you could do? 10 movies. Yes, yeah, still. More than 10 movies. All right, so you're gonna keep 900. Can you give 100 to Kirsten? Yeah. Give her one. Here, let's give her, let's give her this 100. <laughs> give her this 100. Because that way she can share too if she wants to. And then you keep, you keep that. All right, come um, on Kirsten. 100. So now, 100. Kirsten, you have $100. Mm -hmm. You could buy a couple pairs of tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. You could buy, you could go to the movies with all your friends. Mm -hmm. You could go to Toby Mac concert. What do you think you would do with your hundred dollars? I'd maybe buy clothes or shoes. There you go. Now you could keep the hundred dollars for yourself and maybe buy a little bit more, or you could give ten dollars to Kara, and then Kara could still at least go see a movie or go out to eat and get hamburger and French fries or something like that. You think you could share ten dollars with Kara? Mm -hmm. All right, so give Kara ten dollars. One, two, three, two. <laughs> okay, now Kara. Okay, so now you got ten dollars. <laughs> you could go get a couple happy meals at McDonald's. You could go to the movies with friends. You could buy yourself a new scarf or something new. What would you buy with ten dollars? I don't know. Or you could just save it and not use it. Yeah. Like you think you'd save it? Now, you could keep the $10 for yourself. Or, I started today with $1,000 and now I have no money at all. So, you could give me $1 and then I could at least buy a candy bar. Because I feel pretty sad after losing that $1,000 to all y'all. So, I get at least $1 for a candy bar and you have nine still. <gasps> and Cameron's going to give me even more money. <laughs> Guessed. We're talking about giving today. 
Specifically, we're talking about how serving God is like giving a Christmas present to Him. God has given us everything. After all, He is the one who made you. So, it makes sense that we would give a little something back to Him by doing what He asks. It's the same principle we just demonstrated with me and my kids. Cameron, who won $1,000, gave away $100 to Kirsten so she could have a little something. And then Kirsten had $100 and she gave away $10 to Kara so Kara could have a little something. And then Kara, being so nice, decided to give me a dollar so that I could have something. We'll talk a little bit more about giving God a present later. But for now, I want to thank Kara for giving me a dollar out of her 10 so I could buy a candy bar. I mean, I just gave away $999. I need some chocolate. for the season. Are you sick? Never been better. Okay, can you help me pick up these presents? Not a chance. <laughs> That's a good one. Come on. Let's talk, stack these up. Jingle, can't you? Are you serious? Serious as a case of Ophitis. Have you ever noticed how hard we work in December? Well, it's almost Christmas. And what do we get? Nothing! Really? No? I'm tired of giving, 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 and nothing in return. So, Jeremiah Crunchbacker, I'm not running back. I don't care about the puppy you want for Christmas. Santa, if your sleigh doesn't get loaded, it's on you, big boy. And for the naughty and nice list, calling everybody stocking this year. I get it. You're tired of doing things for people because you feel like nobody's giving anything back. Exactly. That's what I'm done for this season. I think you're forgetting a few thi things. Like how Santa gives you a warm L-sized bed to sleep in and all you can eat milk and cookies and free reindeer rides and pointy little shoes. Well, riding Rudolph is fun. Don't forget that. Don't forget that he's the one who makes you magic. Yeah, not everyone can twitch their nose and make eggnog come out. Please stop. Eggnog snot does not make a Merry Christmas. Fine, I guess Santa gives us stuff. Sometimes. He gives you everything. Jingle, and all he wants in return is a little, a little help making Christmas wishes come true. Maybe I could answer a couple more letters. Or proofread a naughty and nice list? Well, if I tape it back together. Jolly, is that why you work so hard? Because everything Santa gives you. Partly, but it's also be, be also because of everything Jesus gives me. He doesn't have milk and cookies. Just peace and joy. When I serve other people, I'm giving back to Jesus for what he's given me. Well, I'm gonna get these presents to the sleigh. Jolly, can I give you a hand? Aren't you done for the season? Yeah, I got some more giving to do. Let's pretend you have a hundred bucks. Can you imagine holding $100 in your hand? Good. Okay, you've probably heard the saying that nothing in life is free, right? So, I'm going to read off some things and I want you to raise your hand or think about it if you think you're going to would buy this thing, okay? Everything costs some money and you can spend your money until it's all gone and then you can't buy anything else, okay? So trust me, you're really gonna want these things. To make a purchase, just raise your hand and then we'll see how much money you have left when I'm done. But I have a warning. If you decide to not buy something that I offer you, you can never go back and have that again. So like if I offered you some ice cream, but you said no, you will never ever again get to have yummy ice cream. Okay, here we go. First thing up for sale, 
Air to breathe, $30. Who wants air? I want air, $30, okay? Food to eat, who wants to eat some food? Yeah, okay, $10 for food. Ooh. Next, a warm place to sleep at night. Me, that's $40, oh boy. And last, we probably need some clothes to wear too. $20, I'll buy clothes. Oh my goodness, what happened? We are out of money already, just like that. I think we have a problem. You each had an imaginary $100 and guess what? We've already spent it all. We've spent it on pretty important things like clothes and food and air. We gotta have all those things, right? But we're all out of cash before we get to some other important things. You definitely don't wanna live without good friends. That'd be at least $10,000. Or parents to take care of you, maybe $100,000. Or God, that's priceless. If we really had to pay for all the important things in life, we would never be able to afford it all. It looks like we're gonna be missing out on some pretty important things because none of us have nearly that much money. No more friends, no more parents for you. We can't afford them. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. I guess you can have your friends and your parents and God, even if you can't afford them with your $100. But you might be wondering why we're even talking about this. Why are we playing this silly game? There's a point. The point is there are a lot of really important things in life that money can't buy. And you know what they all have in common? They're all gifts from God, all things that he gave to us. Think about it. He made you. He made the air that we breathe. He made your parents. He made food that we can eat. He made materials for houses and clothes so we can have a place to live and things to wear. He made friends to care for you and parents to love you. Plus, God himself loves you more than words can say. And all of those are free gifts from God. You can enjoy all of them without ever paying for them. But God does ask that we give him something in return. He wants us. He wants us to give ourselves. As our way of saying thank you to God and for what he has given us, he wants us to serve him. Let's read our Bible about some people who showed their thankfulness to God by giving Christmas presents to his son, Jesus. We're going to look in the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The Story of Christmas Jesus and the Wise Men. This is Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God who would grow up to do amazing things. His parents on earth were Mary Hi. and Joseph. Hey Jesus was born in a barn because there was no room for him anywhere else in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was part of Judea, an area that was ruled by a king named Herod. King Herod was in Jerusalem when some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Excuse me. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. When Herod heard that there was another king born in Judea, he was very upset. Ah. 
as was everyone else in Jerusalem. Yeah, not you. So Herod called all the important priests and Jews together and asked them where this king was supposed to be born. The Jews knew that their king would eventually come and was always told to them that the king of the Jews, the savior of the world, would be born in Bethlehem. So they told that to King Herod. Then King Herod thought of a way to trick the wise men. Aha. So he called a private meeting with them and learned from them when the king of the Jews star first appeared. Oh God. And then King Herod told the wise men, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. Eh, okay. Hey, on your way. But secretly, Herod wanted to know where the king of the Jews was so he could get rid of him. So the wise men went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where Jesus was, and the wise men were filled with joy. Woohoo! They went into the house and saw Mary and Jesus. Hello! Oh, look! Wow! And they bowed down and worshipped Jesus. Wait! They gave him special gifts fit for the king that he was, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then God warned them in a dream to not go home through Jerusalem, where King Herod was, but God told them to go home a different way. So they did, and then an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up. The angel told Joseph to go to Egypt with Mary and Jesus because Herod was looking to kill Jesus. That very night, Joseph left for Egypt with Jesus and Mary. They stayed in Egypt until Herod was gone and it was safe for them to go home to Israel. <laughs> When they returned, an angel warned them about the new ruler of Judea, who was Herod's son. This way. So Joseph and his family went to the region of Galilee and found their new home in the town of Nazareth. Look good? Yep. We'll take it. Where Jesus would grow up and eventually do all the amazing things God had planned for him to do. If God charged us for all the gifts he has given us, we could never afford them all. The only way to say thank you is to give back a little bit of what he gave to us. The wise men who visited Jesus knew this, and as their way of thank saying thank you to God, they brought gifts to Jesus, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Those were valuable things in the time, things they were willing to sacrifice to thank God for his amazing gift of Jesus. Now, you don't have to bring Jesus gold, which is probably a good thing because I haven't seen much gold laying around lately in my house. And you don't have to bring Jesus frankincense or myrrh. To be quite honest, I'm not even quite sure what those things are. But if you want to say thank you to Jesus, I recommend a simpler gift. God wants you. You can give him yourself. Give God yourself by deciding to serve him with your life and serving other people too through this next year. So how can we serve God? There are a million different ways we can serve God, but I'm going to give you three ideas today. Anything we do can please God if we're trying to serve him with our lives. I'm gonna give you three ideas and I want you to listen carefully and decide which one of these three things you'd like to try this week ahead. First, serve God by obeying your parents all week long, even when they tell you to do something that you really don't wanna do. Two, Serve God by being kind to your siblings all week long, even if they aren't kind to you. Three, you can serve God by doing three extra chores this week at home. Now, it doesn't count if it's something you already have to do as a chore. Choose three things that are extras, like loading the dishwasher or something else that you may not have to do. Now, here's your challenge. I want you to pick one of these three things as a way you can serve God this week and commit to doing it all week long. Do you know which one you're going to do? Now, how about you take a look at these PowerPoint review questions and see how well you remember our story from today.
Like we said, there is no way we can repay God for all of the amazing gifts he gives us. But there's a simple way we can give a little something in return. We can serve him. Let's all make it our goal to serve God this week and as our Christmas gift to Jesus for this Christmas season. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. It's been fun being with you the past few weeks. When we come back next time, Mary will be back. See you around. Bye.